Recently, Kawasaki shocked the audience with an unannounced presentation of their hybrid and EV prototypes before the Suzuka 8-hour race event. Surprisingly, Kawasaki didn't publish any pictures, issue any announcements after the demonstration, or give any insight into its production. So, in this video, let's take a look at the two most imminent brand new electric and hybrid bikes that are currently in final testing to determine which of the Japanese Big Four will be the first to launch next-generation EV road vehicles, so stay tuned for more. In developed markets, Kawasaki announced intentions to electrify every one of its motorcycles by 2035, and to provide at least 10 electric or hybrid models in its lineup by 2025. Thanks to a spectacular showing before the Suzuka 8-hour motorcycle race in Japan, Late-stage variants for both sorts of drivetrains have now been publicly disclosed. The only information we have regarding the bike specifications comes from various Japanese sources and what is seen in the pictures of the model due to the absence of an official announcement. The combustion engines of the prototypes are based on the parallel twin architecture used in the Ninja 250 and the Ninja 400, thereby possessing distinct internal dimensions. The two engines are also very similar from an exterior perspective. It also has changes to the powertrain's electric and internal combustion engines, and its exterior is obviously a lot closer to production ready. The engine covers on both sides of the most recent prototype received new castings, possibly indicating additional modifications inside. According to all available information, the bike utilizes the larger 399C twin from the Z400 and Ninja 400. In contrast to the 249cc Ninja variation, it features a taller muffler and slightly modified downpipes. But otherwise, the exhaust system on each of those bikes looks to be identical. Although Kawasaki has been teasing its hybrid technology for a while, first with teaser trailers and then by revealing a stripped-down prototype last October, the machine is obviously a lot closer to commercialization. The hybrid is the more radical and elevated bike. We are all aware of Kawasaki's history with innovative technology. A variety of bikes with forced induction are still only accessible from this well-known motorcycle manufacturer, including its supercharged H2 models. But the hybrid stands out since it's not meant to be outrageously pricey. The frame is a straightforward steel tube construction that is specifically designed to fit the atypical powertrain. The mass production box section, swing arm, and the fork and brakes modest specifications all imply that the hybrid will be reasonably priced despite its cutting-edge technology. Another difference from the 2021 prototype single-pedal-shaped disc brakes is the presence of two front disc brakes, which serves as additional proof that the bike incorporates a larger engine. It might be able to match the performance of the larger internal combustion-only Ninja 650, which is thought to have provided the hybrid with its fork, front fender, and brake calipers. The hybrid's right-side perspective exposes details about the IE power plant it employs as well as the pieces it has in common with other Kawasaki models. Although the green-tinted headlamp was obviously inserted for show only, it is clear that the Kawasaki-style components are present in the nose, and the rear part is fairly substantial. This is due to a 48-volt battery for the hybrid system that is secretly located under the seat. The traditional components of the bike's electrical system are fueled by a smaller 12-volt battery that has also been integrated. The hybrid system also includes an electric motor connected to the gearbox through its own electrically controlled clutch that is positioned above the transmission, directly below the IC engine's intake tracks. This means it's possible to engage and disengage the electric drive component as necessary. The transmission lacks a shift lever and a hand-operated clutch, while having an internally standard design and perhaps it's a six-speed. On the left handlebar, there is a push-button shifter in its place. Kawasaki can easily convert between electric power and internal combustion propulsion by effectively making the transmission semi-automatic. Of course, the concept is that the bike may move entirely on electric power, with no local emissions at modest speeds, like those that are common in urban environments. Out of town, the combustion engine can handle the load and recharge the hybrid battery, especially on fuel-efficient constant-speed runs. Moreover, both internal combustion and the electric powertrains can cooperate to provide the best acceleration and top speed when maximum performance is required. The end product, in theory, should be a motorcycle exhibiting performance on level with a 650cc motorcycle, while using less fuel than a standard 400cc motorcycle. The prototype's notable technical aspects include a low-down intake on the right side that passes via a duct bearing the hybrid symbol. 
The electric motor is probably cooled by this. The motor on an earlier Kawasaki prototype was liquid-cooled. And the bike's front primary water radiator was accompanied by a second radiator. Although liquid cooling for the electric drivetrain is still likely, it appears that the radiator has been moved to the back, closer to the motor, and hidden behind the bodywork. Kawasaki has clearly put a lot of effort into the packaging, even though it's difficult to tell how far along the development alignment is. This is in terms of the final look, or even to know if this is indeed similar to what it will eventually look like. Whatever battery tech is covered up beneath the packaging is not instantly obvious. A deeper inspection reveals additional basic mechanics that are probably going to be wrapped or covered up. But given that the majority of electric vehicles currently on the market make it pretty plain what powers them, Kawasaki has undoubtedly done their research. A motorcycle that complies with ultra green zones in the city but can still be used farther away may really be an extraordinary sensible and well-timed move. At a time when electric bikes that can be used profitably over long distances are in locations where it's difficult to charge or hard to come by. Let us know what you think about these prototypes that incorporate all electric and electric assisted powertrains in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for more videos like this one. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Goodbye.